The countdown is on as the U.S. and foreign forces now only have until Tuesday to get out, and with that means the end of evacuation flights. And here outside the airport, there is panic as people rush to see if they can get on some of these final flights. Now, we understand the U.S. and the Taliban have a deal that the Taliban are only allowed to let people through here who have foreign passports, who have visas, and who have paperwork that is verified. I'm here without documents because a lot of people that went to the U.S. on evacuation flights were civilians. So I thought if civilians are going and I served in the army, I should be eligible to go too. Everybody's going, so I'm going too. In my house, they won't leave me alone. My wife says, get down there. Why are you so lazy? I leave the house every day, so my wife stops hassling me. In a way to control the crowd and try to figure this out, they've been looking through people's paperwork at different locations around Kabul and then putting them on these buses, knowing that these people are actually allowed to be on these flights and they are prioritized to get through. And in the meantime, they're trying to control the crowds and keep people back, stop them from swamping so that these buses can come through. How they are doing that is by shooting guns in the air, by using water cannons and by beating people to push them back. I've been close to the gate three times, but because of gunshots and shouting, it makes everyone scared. Since I'm a woman, I don't have the courage to push past them. I'll do my best to get out, even if I get shot. I will continue trying to get inside the airport. Now, the Taliban say that anybody who wants to get through and, and wants to leave and has the paperwork that would allow them on these flights can do so. But they also tell us they hope people don't. They say that these people, many of them who are highly skilled, would be an asset to the country going forward and that they hope that they stay. But in the meantime, with only six days left until these flights have to end, and we know that the numbers, the, the number of flights left will decrease in the days going forward, that uh, the, the crunch is on. And a lot of these people are trying their best to get through into the airport today. Well, staying with Afghanistan, let's bring in Ibadullah Bahir, who's a lecturer of transitional justice at the American University of Afghanistan. He joins us now live via Skype from Kabul. Thank you very much uh, for your time. Uh, firstly, very soon, uh, the world's eyes, the international gaze, will shift perhaps very slowly uh, away from Afghanistan when the final flights leave Kabul airport. What will life look like, do you think, for you and those close to you? Thank you for having me. The apprehensions are real with regards to the Taliban exercising retributive justice once the international community's eyes turn away from Afghanistan. But we're hoping that what we heard from Anthony Blinken and the rest of the United States administration that they will keep using their leverage and the incentives that they have to offer to the Taliban with regards to international legitimacy, foreign aid, um, and relief of sanctions. Those can be a continuous process. We hope that at the back of the Taliban's minds is the idea that recognition can be revoked, that sanctions can be reimposed, that foreign aid can be seized. So all of those are um, things that can continuously be used to apply pressure and make sure the Taliban continue to comply to the promises that they have made so far. Uh, given the fact that m most countries uh, have retained some presence uh, in Kabul, keeping their embassies there, albeit with skeleton staff for the time being, um, what can be gained, do you think, from communicating with the Taliban di directly? Where do we go from here? What role is there for the international community when it comes to the Taliban? Well, you have to set a, uh, an understanding. Uh, the major uh, failure with regards to negotiations is uh, the communication of expectations. So oftentimes, two opposing parties don't know what the other end expects of them. So that rationality is very limited uh, from time to time. So it's very important to engage with the Taliban and to communicate with them as to what are the expectations, what is the recognition or the aid conditioned on. Um, for them to understand exactly what the red lines are. Um, and um, again, this is an opportunity for the Taliban with regards to conflict transformation. Once you enter a post-conflict society, you have the opportunity to rebuild, to recreate um, a society free of the flaws that existed before. And one of the major gaps here is the gap of trust. Again, the Taliban cannot hold people hostage if they 
want their skills. They need to establish a government soon because they need to give people a counterfactual. You know, people are trying to go abroad, but they need to have a counterfactual in Afghanistan to stay for. They cannot stay for an unknown future that is full of fear of retribution. Um, so the Taliban really need to start addressing these points if they hope to stop these people from leaving willingly.